This is the Yama MDF1 MIDI data filer from 8687. Very unsexy, but a piece of gear that holds a deep nostalgic grip on my heart because I used this so much, I relied on it, it never failed me. I had this hooked up to my Alesis MMT8 sequencer and it went uh, away with me on all sorts of gigs. A big thanks to Chris from CP Magnetic Media who sent me this. I've talked to Chris in the past and told him that I really missed it and I couldn't find it locally after all these years and he was so kind to send me one as a donation, so thanks Chris. Originally, back in the 80s, these used quick disks to uh, save your data, but Chris was so kind to install a uh, quick disk emulator onto this one, so I don't have to faff around with these anymore. So uh, today I'm going to show you how we used these back in the day, how you can load and save uh, C6 data from your sequencer of choice onto an external data recorder like this. So uh, let's go. So there's one track on the QX7 here and I just play along with the bass in real time. And typical for cheap sequencers in the 80s, there's no storage device built into the QX7 here. Hence the need for a uh, external storage device that wouldn't break the bank. But all is relative, the MDF-1 cost around $350 in 1987, so uh, so much for cheap. And as I told you in the intro, this originally came with a quick disk system, 2.8 inch quick disks, which could hold 59.9 kilobytes on each side. Chris was so kind to install a quick disk emulator on this one, so I don't have to faff around with those unreliable 2.8 inch quick disks anymore. Hooking this up is very easy, MIDI in, MIDI out, etc. to and from the sequencer of choice. So let's save that sequence we have going in the QX7. Out through the MIDI port and into the MDF1, it's a SysX file being transferred here. First I have to format a disk, so I insert the disk into the drive, or a virtual disk in this case, and I use the Yamaha job command hierarchy system and I uh, format the disk. And this is now happening in real time, just as it would have been, using a real disk here, quick disk. And now the disk has been formatted. Now I can save the sequence onto it. So I press the save button on the MDF1. It is now ready to receive the SysX data from the QX7. So I load up that and send that out. And it's now being stored in the buffer of the MDF1. Now I press save again on the MDF1 and it's now being saved, stored onto the quick disk, or in this case again, the virtual quick disk. And that's all there's to it. My sequence has now been saved. I have one file on that disk. If I haven't used all the memory, I can save different files onto one disk if I want to. So I've turned off the QX7, everything is now lost, but let's see if we can load that sequence back. And this is even faster than saving. All I have to do is turn on my sequencer, load up the file on the MDF1. In this case, we only have one file on disk. And all I have to do now is press the load button and everything is going out of the MDF1 from that file and into the QX7, which will receive this with no fuss or whatever. It's just happening. You see the track one lights up there and here's that sequence being played back. So when you wanted to go computerless back in the day, only using a hardware sequencer of the cheapest kind, and you used an external MIDI filer like this, this was the setup you went for. It worked perfectly all the time, I never had any problems with this at all. Very easy, very fast, and it never failed actually, so having this back now brings back a lot of memories. So a uh, big thanks to Chris from CP Magnetic Media for sending me this. And for the rest of you, I hope you liked this little glimpse into how we used external MIDI uh, recorders back in the day to store our sequences and uh, patches or whatever, stuff like that. I'm Esmercraft, I am the 80s. Thanks for watching, see you next time, cheers!